Um, ever feel like God is against you? Like, like mm-hmm. not on your side? Mm-hmm. Yep. Totally, totally like you're a puppet on a string or you're, you're God's little puppet and God's little clown walking around town, bumping into things and, and uh, having your life just totally, totally, uh, you can sit on a pad if you want to. Godzilla slander will not be tolerated. Godzilla slander? And that's not even talking about Godzilla, but uh, let, let's let's say Godzilla was attacking the city. <laughs> and then you're you're like, oh figures that would happen to me. That's just the way God planned it for me. Uh, and this is not a lecture about God, what it's a lecture about is victimhood, being a victim. And I got news for you. Uh, you're not really a victim. You're not really a victim of anything. God's not out to get you. The world's not out to get you. Uh, no one's really out to get you. The Your life is a, a series of your own uh, choices, consequences. And not only that, people are very concerned about themselves. And they're very concerned about themselves. So you, in, in, many, in many ways, make, create your own victimhood. And you can break that victim uh, state. There's no reason for you to stay on it. Um, I wrote down a, f- a few things that, uh, how you can tell if someone has a victim mentality. I thought I'd go over them with you, just real briefly. And if you have some of these, then maybe we can change it. Maybe we can have a discussion about it. But how about this one? Here's one I see a lot. A victim, someone who has a victim mentality will blame other people. You know, it's everybody else's fault but their fault. You know, I forgot my money so I can't buy, uh, buy something at the store. It's not my fault that I did it. It's somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's fault. God's fault. God, God has got it out for me. How about they refuse to take responsibility for their own problems? That's a big one. It's not me. I didn't do it. And why should I have to take care of this problem? Why should I have to wash the dishes? I keep going back to the dishes all the time. Believe me, it's a problem in my house. It's a problem in everybody's house, is a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. <laughs> it's not yeah, just you guys' house. house. I mean, it's a problem in everybody's house. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I mean, it was a <laughs> back and forth. They strong. We had there were several different houses, and literally every house had a problem with people doing. Who's going to do the dishes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in my own house, it's it's like who's going to do the dishes? Yeah, you know, it, it's an issue. How about this? They believe life is absolutely against them. Life, not just God. Life itself is against me. Mm-hmm. I'm screwed. Life. Has got me blued and glued and tattooed. <laughs> life itself is against you. Mm. Having trouble coping with problems in their life and feel powerless against them. Just feeling powerless against your own problems. Even when they're oftentimes self-created. How about this one? Feel some degree of pleasure when receiving attention or pity because of the misfortune. Now that is a real thing. Some people get addicted to the problems. They get addicted to the, um, the idea of someone giving them sympathy. I'm sick, uh, and, they, and they get attention. So then they learn that they can get attention that way. Or I, I have all of these issues and all of these problems. You ever been around someone and all they do is they talk negative stuff all the time? And it feels like, all they want is attention. It happens. Might seem overly uh, dramatic, which can emerge as a method of coping with abuse or trauma, facing one's negative circumstances after another can also make, uh, uh, facing another one can also make this outcome more likely. Man, that one hits home to me because I am way dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we've met those people. We've met those type of people that prefer to be a clown 
prefer to joke and make inappropriate uh, jokes and, and, and whatnot in order to divert the attention off of them. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, you can release yourself from the chains of victimhood and you can start with these 10 easy steps. I like to do things in steps. Sounds like my book report. Is... Ten, 10 easy steps to what's your book report called? Well, my book report was on eliminating the chains of victimhood. Oh, or yeah, right. see, right? R, so yeah. See, so here it is. Let's see if there's some of them that are similar. Stop blaming others. Yep, yeah, that was enough. Boom, because it's the truth. Stop blaming others. It's not anyone else's fault. It's you. You're the reason for the season. You're the reason why things happen. Your choices and consequences make things happen. Stop comparing yourself. Comparison is the, the thief of joy. The thief of joy. You can't compare yourself against somebody else. Oh, it's true. What one person can do, another person can do. That's, that's a true story. But to, to compare yourself, oh, well, I'm not good enough because I'm not doing this the same way. No. Just be the best you. Work on being the best you. You know, be compassionate to yourself. Actually show compassion. Be your own biggest fan. We definitely have talked about that, to be your own biggest fan. How can you be compassionate for other people if you can't even be compassionate for yourself? How can you help somebody else if you can't even help yourself with being just a little compassionate to you? How about this? Practice gratitude. Gratitude rock all day long, man. I picked up a couple of them today at the place we went to. They're in my coat pocket. I picked up a couple today. Practice gratitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful for what you have already. Be grateful for the little things in life. The little things in life are the most important things. The simple pleasures in life are the little things. Resist self-sabotage. Now this is something that's close to my heart because I used to self-sabotage all the time. That's you, guilty? Guilty as very charged. Guilty. Very guilty. Mm -hmm. I used to self-sabotage myself all the time. I would start to get ahead in life and man, I would do something to screw it up every single time. It's like I, it's like I was trying, actively trying to just destroy any of my opportunities or chances in life and I don't know I have I definitely wasn't doing it consciously but certainly subconsciously maybe I felt guilty maybe I couldn't let go of anger or, or resentment or whatever it was but one way or the other I would always self-sabotage it got so crazy that I would cause chains of events for example I had a recording studio one time and it was going good I was making making bucks I had the recording studio going and a print shop at the same time. Print shop was in one side, the recording studio was in the other. I created a recording label and everything. One day I was uh, coming in to record a band and someone broke in and stole all of my recording gear. Everything was gone, everything. I had borrowed money from my mom in order to get the recording gear I needed. Fortunately, my mom had insurance but that was just enough to pay her back. It wasn't enough for me to start a new studio. So I had to beg, borrow, and steal. No, well, not steal. Beg, borrow, just to try to get another studio going, which I did. I was able to do that and got another studio going. And I did end up selling that one to, uh, to a big church. And I sold the record company to a, well, they're still a record company today, but now they're a hip hop label. Um, so I had some good things happen, but I always seemed to sabotage myself on the way. One way I sabotage myself with the record label is that I, I, 
I was right on the cusp of something big at the time, but I, I couldn't recognize that it was big. It was called MP3s. Mm -hmm. And it was a website called mp3.com. And we had some of our band's music on it. And my partner was like, MP3s are the way of the future. No one's gonna buy um, albums. No one's gonna buy cassettes. No one's gonna buy CDs when CDs were sort of uh, uh, new and big at the time. I was like, you're crazy. No one's ever gonna give up that to, to download music. And my, my partner, Chris, he made it a big banner. We had our website on there, Red Rum Records, redrumrecords.com, and underneath it, it said, download this. And it went to, our, to MP3s and stuff. And so we were on the cutting edge, but I didn't believe it, and I started self-sabotaging. I wouldn't invest in mp3.com. I wouldn't invest into turning the music into mp3s. I invested into CDs and things like that, which they were selling at the time. But had I stuck with it, had I invested in mp3.com, I could have been a, a multi-billionaire right now. But I didn't. <laughs> I chose to self-sabotage, not see the writing on the wall. Um, Perform acts of kindness. Every Wednesday, I take the Valley View House down to do a, a service project at Switchpoint every week. And every week, I suggest everyone do something of service to some, for someone else. You know, the samurai, the word samurai, the root of it means to serve, to be of service of someone. They would serve their Lord. Their retain, you know, they would be the retainer. And their whole objective was to, to, to do whatever they could for their Lord. To be of service to others is, is a, a, a tremendous gift you can give yourself. Perform acts of kindness in general is more than just service. It's also having civility, being polite, being kind, being kind to yourself, not just, not just being compassionate, being kind to yourself, loving yourself, waking up in the morning and being like, what's up, dude? Yeah, you're looking good this morning. <laughs> you know, getting up in the morning and, and um, being happy about what you see in yourself. That can only start if you have forgiveness in your life. If you're a victim, there has, there's the, the feeling of forgiveness is, is hard to, uh, to have. If you think of yourself only as a victim, you won't forgive yourself. Forgiveness is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself next to service and being kind to yourself. Take the opportunity to forgive yourself for whatever it is you've got going on. It's worth it. It's worth to take the time to actually sit down, make a list of things that uh, are, are, trouble, are troublesome in your life or have been, and forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of the anger, the hurt, the sadness, the disappointment. Forgive yourself of all the, the misdeeds you may have done. Let it go. Drop off the baggage. Put down the weights. No need to carry it anymore. If you do that, you can build up self-confidence. Walk into the room like Superman as, a part, as opposed to walking into the room like Clark Kent. Walk into the room like um, Iron Man, Tony Stark. He owns that room, man. Tony owns the room. While Happy, on the other hand, he's a, a sort of like a bumbling, you know, unconfident. Uh, he has to build himself up. He has to try to make himself look like he's confident, but he's really not. But Tony Stark had, doesn't have that problem. He's like, you're all buying this, weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> and for your trouble, I'm going to throw in this champagne. <laughs> hilarious part of that movie but it shows his confidence he's just that 
good. Oh, sure, you want to take a picture of me? Yes, I want to take a picture of you. Uh, and he uh, was an uh, incredible character. And a lot you can learn from the confidence of Tony Stark. And how about this? Find the source of your learned helplessness. Ooh. It may be helpful to find where these self-limiting beliefs originate. If you're having self-sabotaging, if you are thinking of yourself as a victim, it might be helpful if you actually learn where they come from. Take a little time to do a little self-assessment, to seriously look deep down inside and see what you can find. I bet you if you do a little digging, you can come up with some answers of where this, these self-limiting beliefs come from. Maybe you're bullied in school. Maybe you have a harsh, critical parent, uh, older siblings, and maybe you know, give you a noogie. <laughs> uh, someone who is chronically demanding of you. And identifying and addressing the source of these negativities can help you move beyond a victim mentality. If you find that this is a significant influence in, in your life, I would suggest that you work uh, with your therapist to really dig deep into it. And then finally, shift your, your mentality from victim to survivor. Yeah. As one of the main points in the book. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. You got to be able to be uh, totally different from being a, a, a victim. You are a survivor. You're a fighter. That's the difference between a victim and a survivor. A victim continues to allow the, the, the torment. The survivor, he's the fighter. Fight to survive. Rocky Balboa style. <laughs> yeah. Challenge your perceptions of reality. Our perceptions are our reality. There, are, there is no real reality other than what we perceive things to be. So challenge your perceptions. You are not a victim. Challenge that perception that you are. Challenge it and say, hell no, I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. I'm not gonna give in to these kind of thoughts and feelings. I have self-confidence like Tony Stark. I have the ability not to make myself or fall prey to my own self-sabotage. You don't have to blame anybody else. You can take accountability for your own actions. You can be your best and should be your best self. So, victims, let us not be victims.